Welcome, one and all, to the mystical world of Felbar. Adventures abound throughout this realm, and we appreciate the opportunity to regale you with some stories from these trails. These accounts are all based on actual RPG experiences that occurred within Adventures in Felbar. Some of these tales may be for mature audiences, while others may be for very immature audiences. We now present the sage Mikas Tumo from Tamel, also known as the Bard of Felbar. Welcome to Session Fartook-25. Animated skeletons and a rare displacer beast found the party and inflicted injuries to Lady Irena and superficial damage to the males in the group. A leather pouch containing three sealed vials was discovered by the mage, with Welby adding another 20 gold crowns worth of gems to his collection. We come back to the group as Cabe and Fargus get their wounds cleaned up. Where should we go from here? inquired Sister Elaine. After a brief discussion, the group agreed to begin to search the interior, as the courtyard was becoming painful. The group opted to check the room where the skeletons had emerged, surmising that the numbers against them had probably emptied the area. The party searched several debris-filled chambers on that side of the old fortress, with no opponents but nothing of value found. A set of off-kilter wooden doors led them to the great hall of the complex. Tattered banners and aged corpses covered the room that was filled with wooden tables and benches. Moving through the broken crockery, the group sent Welby and Sister Elaine along the walls with Cabe, Fargus, and Lady Irena in the center. The ranger had lit a torch from their inventory and the illumination allowed the rogue and cleric to see but remain partially hidden in the shadows. Movement! I've got movement! yelled out Welby O'Toole. Looking to the halfling pointing, the group turned their attention to the fire pit area. A round, bulbous image appeared out of the chimney and floated on air. It's an eye tyrant! yelled out the bard, who attempted to rush forward, but was tackled by the ranger, who began to yell, Do nothing! Do nothing! to the group. Poised for battle, the rest of the party knew how deadly an eye tyrant was and quickly peppered the man with questions. He yelled for silence and allowed the bard to rise, again taking in angry glances. It's not an eye tyrant. It's called a gas spore. It only looks like a beholder. The circular manifestation floated towards the group and Lady Ireno was clearly concerned at the peril the group was in. The ranger continued with, You hit that thing and small spores will fly out of the beast and make us all sick. Just don't do anything and it won't hurt us. He directed the group towards the far end where an exit was available. The gas spore was curious and went from PC to PC floating and dodging the group's movement but never attacked. After becoming bored with the delvers the beast made its way back to the back of the great hall where the party had entered initially. The party filed out into the base of the main tower with Welby exiting last. As the group examined the tower base, they concluded that it must have been inhabited by a female from the colorful appearance and the old silks present. A loud pop was heard, and the group turned to see Welby running into the room with them. What did you do? demanded the mage. The halfling explained that he didn't want the gas board to show up in an inopportune time and had thrown a rock at it. You were right, Fargus, he quipped. That thing just blew up and sent spores everywhere. The group shook their heads and continued to search the room as Welby noticed a blemish start to grow at the tip of his nose. I think this room belonged to the whore from the clothing, said Sister Elaine as she held a dainty outfit up. The men of the group snickered until sharp looks from both ladies caused them to cough and continued their search. Cabe let out a cheer and withdrew from under the bed. Holding aloft a silver hairbrush, he announced that he had discovered something. The rest of the group paused their search and asked him what it was. He fumbled the item through his hands and pointed out that it was made of silver and had a musical symbol on the handle. It's a clef, he proudly announced, and the item jerked out of his hands and began to comb his fine hair. A broad smile crossed his face and he stated that he felt pretty. 
A moment later, a dark creature dropped from the ceiling and wrapped its tentacles around the bard's head, causing him great consternation. Tugging at the tendrils, Cave dropped onto the old bed and the others rushed to his side. The bard's body quickly went rigid and he no longer struggled. Bolts of flame shot from the mage's fingertips, striking the grill. The wounds were sufficient enough to cause it to release the paralyzed body of the bard, but it quickly turned itself against the party. Fargus began to attack and sliced off one tentacle before being grabbed by two more. He too went stiff and fell to the ground. Watch the arms! They must be toxic! warned Sister Elaine. Lady Irena fired off a few more bolts and noticed that the movement of the creature seemed hampered. Sister Elaine dodged and swatted with her mace, but was unsuccessful in her attacks. Welby O'Toole slid under one tentacle and rolled into a position below the bed. The girl focused its attentions on Sister Elaine and Lady Irena, but could not land a blow due to their dodging. The halfling shortly reappeared on the other side of the bed, leapt up onto an old bookcase, and launched himself at the head of the creature. Tackling the creature in midair, the light weight of the halfling was enough to drop the creature low enough for Sister Elaine to smash it with her weapon. Another blast of fire from the mage and several strikes from the cleric's mace were enough to finally kill their opponent. The creature fell limp and each lady went to one of their fallen associates as Welby stood guard and scanned for more attackers, but found none. Fargus snapped out of his sundered state first and thrashed about, accidentally striking Sister Elaine in the nose. After apologies were given, he began to shake out his limbs and regained feeling throughout his whole body. He's still not moving, yelled out a panicked Lady Irena who began to slap and shake the rigid body of the bard. The other three huddled around her hoping to see signs of improvement, but did not. Thinking quickly, the mage grabbed the sack she had recovered from the courtyard and fumbled through it. Two blues and a light blue, but which? Which one do I use? Fargus and Welby looked at each other in concern as her decision to give the bard an unknown elixir caused them trouble. The cleric attempted to help, but the female wizard was too quick. She pulled the wax stopper on a blue vial and poured the contents down Cabe's throat. Moments later, with no reaction, Suddenly, the bard came to and lashed out, thinking he was still fighting for his life. His actions caught Lady Arena off guard, who took a full punch in the face, causing her to careen off the bed and onto the floor. Gasping, the half-elf regained his ability to move and quickly looked around. Sister Elaine leaned in and, in a calming tone, told him the danger had passed. He nodded to her. Then everyone turned their attention back to the punched mage who was getting up holding her face. Are, are you okay, milady? asked Cabe. The angry elf uncovered her eye, showing that it was going to be discolored in the very near future. Yes, no thanks to you, she angrily sputtered out. Serves me right for saving your life. We close out this episode now and give you our thanks for listening. Please subscribe to this podcast. And don't forget to follow us on Twitter at The Bards Podcast. For everyone in Adventures at Philbar, thanks for listening.